Okay, welcome back to lecture three of electrical systems in agricultural and biosystems engineering. Again, this is Ian, and uh, if you have questions about the previous lectures, you can email me or uh, visit my website for my contact details. Now we're going to move into the uh, next topic of circuits, and that's on uh, RLC circuits, because so far we have uh, discussed about AC uh, and, and treated them very much like uh, direct current. But in reality, okay, we have AC behaving like the combination of uh, resistors of a resistor, inductor, and capacitor. Or this is very much referred to as the RLC circuits. Now, why is this uh, the case? It has to do with the uh, phenomena of inductance and capacitance in the uh, circuit involving um, alternating current. Uh, these are both, okay, the, the phenomena of inductance and capacitance are both observed in AC circuits. Now, to understand this, we go back to the waveform, uh, the AC waveform that we have previously seen and identify with the phase angles, okay? Uh, take note that uh, the, the uh, value of both the, the I and the P changes as it moves through time. Now we say that the voltage and current are in phase as shown in uh, figure one, if the uh, voltage and I occur at the same time, and this is what happens in purely resistive circuits. We also have the corresponding equations, okay, where we have the voltage and current okay, changing through time. So we have the uh, instantaneous um, versions of this, okay, the, the instantaneous voltage and the instantaneous current. Now, if we have uh, an inductor, okay, uh, it imposes okay, a, an inertia of uh, the magnetic field caused by the coils, okay? And this in turn results to the uh, voltage leading the current by um, 90 degrees. Okay, uh, just recall the uh, Lenz law. Okay, Lenz law is a a a, a topic or, or a concept in electromagnetic physics, which theoretically it describes the the opposing uh, magnetic fields uh, of a, of current in uh, in relation to the. Uh, Electromotive force. So the, the the magnetic and electromotive forces are uh, affecting each other. Now in equation form, okay, we have the voltage in a circuit with an inductor as shown in uh, figure two. We have the uh, current, okay, the change in current over time. Uh, it's proportional. Okay, it's proportional to that. Okay. So recall that in a purely resistive circuit, the voltage is proportional merely to the uh, current, but uh, graphically, the plot of this current and voltage is uh, shown, okay? So we have the voltage leading the current by 90 degrees. Now from the differential equations, okay, the derivative of current I with respect time t, uh, the quantity multiplied by the uh, inductance is now the, the voltage, okay? Let's try to, to look at that, okay? So we, we interpret, okay, the phase lagging of the current. We now introduce a uh, the slope, 
okay, of a trigonometric function. Now, at every point of the function, the change in current over the change in time yields a value of the slope of that uh, infinitesimal uh, portion, okay? The change in uh, current over change in time multiplied by the uh, inductor, which is constant. So it produces an instantaneous value of voltage that is graphed um, in this way, okay? Well, it's it's the same form of the uh, the, the 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 original sine uh, sinusoidal wave, but the values are different. Okay, but it should follow the same uh, pattern. The resulting values over the length of the trigonometric function, okay, the i function, the function, the trigonometric function of i versus t yields the uh, trigonometric function of v with respect to time. Okay, for capacitive circuits, on the other hand, okay, the current flowing through the circuit is related to the uh, value of the charge Q of the, the capacitor. We get uh, equation five by summing up the voltage in the circuit of uh, figure five, okay? Voltage V is in volts, Q is in uh, Coulomb and the capacitance C is in Farad. Now, uh, equation six is the charge flow rate or the current. Now, introducing equation five into equation six, okay? Introducing equation five into equation six, the latter becomes uh, the change in voltage over time because we are multiplying that with the constant capacitance C. And now this becomes eventually equation seven. Again, using the concept of differential calculus, we uh, interpret the phase lagging of the voltage this time as the uh, trigonometric function, okay, of uh, the change of voltage with respect to time yielding uh, the, the point okay, in the trigonometric function of I versus T instantaneous, okay, that changes okay, uh, through time al uh, along with the same pattern as the original trigonometric function. Now, like the previous mathematical analysis and uh, equation of operation, sorry, the slope, okay, the slope multiplied by the factor C is now the current. Okay. The corresponding plot of the continuous slope values yield the graph of the current to which okay, the voltage lags by 90 degrees. Well, we now have the working knowledge okay, of the operation of an RLC circuit after taking the individual components one by one. Now uh, we have VR, um, which is in phase, okay? which is in phase with the current of the, the circuit in an RLC circuit. VL leads I by 90 degrees and VC lags I by 90 degrees. The net voltage cannot be added directly. Why? Because they're not in the same direction. So instead we induce vector addition to do this. And we also introduce the, uh, the concept of the phasor diagram so that we can appreciate or, or, or differentiate between the different values of the V and the current, uh, the, the voltages and the currents. This shows the uh, orientation of the scalar values according to their direction by, by how many degrees do they 
uh, lag or lead the other values. We didn't, okay, we have the uh, final phasor diagram as shown in figure seven. These are the actually the polar coordinates of the instantaneous voltages and currents. Uh, in this case, okay, we have uh, the value of theta equals zero for um, okay a zero for for uh, for the case okay. Oh, now we have VL and VC being collinear, uh, meaning of opposite directions that are simply added by uh, scalar addition. We have that as equation eight. Okay, now we're referring to the facial diagram. Okay, equation nine should be the vector addition of the voltage with the um, with the RLC components. Okay. The right angle triangle relationship of the voltage tri uh, voltages relate the phase angle by trigonometry. Now, equation 10, where we have the quantity uh, VL minus VC okay. uh, all over VR is the tangent of the phase angle. This is now based on the uh, trigonometric relationship. Now, so we ha we have now the whole uh, setup to determine this, this values for a VR, a VL, and the PLC, okay, and also the the phase angle. Now, from lecture one, the V and I are uh, instantaneous and have the. Uh, Waveform equation uh, v sub zero uh, times sine of quantity two pi ft, and for i it's i sub zero times the same quantity uh, sine uh, two pi ft. The, the power in the circuit of an RLC circuit is uh, based from the uh, equation that we had some time back. It's p equals to iv, which is equals to i squared v. I squared R, sorry. And adjusting this for an R, I, AC circuit, we in just introduce the instantaneous uh, values for voltage and current into the equation. So we have uh, equation number 12. For the uh, base, is, this is based on the current, okay? Uh, with the sine waveform format of V and I, the power in equation K becomes uh, equation 12. And we have uh, figure number nine to represent this, uh, this value of the power in a, a graph. Uh, what happens if you see is the negative uh, portion okay, of the sine waveform of the sinusoidal wave becomes uh, or it shifts in in direction so it becomes now positive if you see okay the power uh, produced by the peak voltage and current in an AC circuit is uh, again just a fraction of the equivalent voltage and current in a DC circuit because of the red portion where the uh, there is no uh, equivalent uh, power in an AC circuit. Now, at the peak voltage and current, where I sub zero equals the I RMS or the root mean square um, current, okay, and V sub zero equals the uh, root mean square, okay, the VRMS, we have the square of the I RMS equal to the square of the I sub zero uh, multiplied uh, multiplied by the square of the sine of the two pi ft. Okay. Sine of two pi ft is one half. So that since we have a, um, a 90 degree, okay, 
So the square of the IRMS is uh, 0 0.5 times the IO, or uh, the square of the IO, sorry. And so we have the, the value of the IRMS as the square root of one half uh, times I sub uh, so zero, and it's equivalent to 0 0.707 I sub zero. And similarly, we have VRMS equals 0 0.707 uh, B sub zero. Uh, we, we introduce now the equivalent reactance or the equivalent resistance uh, referred to as inductive and capacitive reactants. And these are shown in uh, equations 15 and 16. Uh, for and the, the inductor, the uh, equivalent resistance or referred to as inductive reactance is X sub L equals two pi F times L, where L is the value of the inductor okay, in Henry. Capacitive reactance on the other hand is X sub C, which is equals one over two pi FC with C as the uh, capacitance in uh, farad. Similar to the voltage, recall the phasor diagram, inductive reactance and uh, capacitive reactance are added vectorially okay, to uh, the resistance. From the voltage equation, we have the resultant voltage in the circuit equal to the, oh, sorry, equal to the uh, square root of the vector addition of VR, V sub R, uh, V sub L, and V sub C. We can extract one from the equation, so we isolate. Uh, R squared, uh, VR squared, sorry, VR squared, plus the quantity VL minus XC, the quantity squared, which is the, now referred to as the impedance of the um, system. Okay, this is equation number um, 19, okay? So if you remove the V, okay, uh, we can extract the I, Okay. In this setup, the phase angle is positive, okay, since the V leads the uh, I. If I leads the V, uh, the value is negative. The inductor and capacitor are treated as resistors via the reactance and resonance in a circuit. Of course, if 2 pi F uh, sub zero L equals the inverse of two pi F sub zero C. Now there are uh, concepts of the uh, instantaneous power, uh, the apparent reactive and real or true power. Instantaneous power is the product of the voltage and current at an instant true or effective power is the product of the RMS voltage and the current. Imagine the true power as the average constant value over the, over the cycle as shown in figure number 10. If the circuit contains elements other than a resistor, there is uh, the phase shift angle due to the lagging and the system now generates a wattless or reactive power. Apparent power is the combined real, real and reactive top power. Let's discuss this better via a, a, a diagram showing the, uh, the uh, this different power concepts, okay, via the, um, via the, uh, Diagram, okay, via the the, the the face the face angle diagram, okay, okay. So the relationship among the real reactive and apparent powers, okay, can be shown here using the impedance face angle, which is referred to as the, okay, this is the power triangle, 
and it's actually a vector representation of the sine waveform of uh, shown in um, in figure 10. Now the phase angle is equation number um, 17. Okay, we have already shown you uh, the equation 17. It's, uh, let me see, okay. Okay, so it's it's also the same as uh, tangent alpha, uh, tangent, um, tangent, tangent, okay, uh, equals to V, the, the VL minus VC or quantitative over VR. Now we have the uh, impedance formula already, and it would be possible for us to make the circuit uh, purely resistive, then we are improving the the system or the circuit. And this is the introduction of the concept of the power factor and the power factor correction, because actually the the the, the phase angle identifies the the phase uh, the, the power factor of the system. Now to reduce reactive power in a in a um, an AC uh, equipment or appliance, okay, a capacitor can be added to improve the power factor and increase the power output. That is now the concept of power factor correction. All right, so that would be all uh, for this lecture. We're going to tackle the uh, computations in the next lecture involving now AC circuits with um, RL RLC elements. Thank you for listening.